My name's John. Welcome to a short video which is going to be all about four jaw chucks, how to indicate work in four jaw chucks. The four jaw chuck is often found in a cupboard under the lathe, rusting away because people don't use them. If you're using a four jaw chuck all the time, you won't need to watch this video because you're able to set up a four jaw chuck very quickly indeed. I use a four jaw chuck quite a lot. I'm fairly good at setting them up, but there is a method of setting a four jaw chuck up which takes out of it not the guesswork, but it stops you from turning the chuck key the wrong way. A lot of people end up turning the chuck key the wrong way and they make things worse and they just get frustrated. So, what I want to do is show you a method of setting up a four jaw chuck that works for me. Four jaw chuck. It's got advantages over a three jaw chuck. Obviously, you can, you can grip things that are round, you can grip the regular shaped items in it. It also gets a much better hold, a much stronger hold than a three jaw chuck, so you can take heavier cuts. You can also take your workpiece out of the four jaw chuck and put it back in and get it aligned accurately again. You can't do that with a three jaw chuck. Even the best three jaw chuck in the world has got run out. I've got a job here that needs to be set up very accurately. It's, it's a little stub arbor. I'm going to make a, a centre out of it for my dividing head. So I'm going to put this in the chuck and I'll show you a quick and easy way of setting the chuck up. If you notice on the front face of the chuck, there's a row of concentric rings. They aren't there to make the chuck look pretty. They're there to help you line the chuck up. You can see each jaw is slightly below the second ring down or you can use the inner jaw or you can use any part of the jaw you want. So I'm adjusting the jaws so that's a slack fit in there. All we'll do is take each jaw and turn just a little bit to uh, Right. We've got a little nip on each jaw, and you can see it's running out. It's not running out much, but it is running out. I've got a clock gauge mounted in my tool post. This clock gauge is just 25,000 each way, 50,000 total. You can use a DTI hole there. I've got a Noga hole I use all the time, just depends. This one. Is better for the method I'm going to show you. The clock here just set on centre height, that's quite important. I've got the clock here set up, touching the workpiece. It's quite a run out of this. The way this works is you find your lowest point, which is there. Zero your clock gauge, then you find your highest point, which is there which is 43,000 you turn it back to half that which is 21 there then re-zero your clock you turn the chuck forward until the next jaw which is that one is lying level with the lathe bed you tighten this jaw it's easier to have two chuck keys so we'll loosen the back one off. Tighten the front one till it goes back to zero, which is there. And straight away, well within six or seven thousands. Find your high point, which is that one. Tighten that. High point again, which is in between these two, so you that one and that one. We're getting near now. High point again, which is that one. High point is that one.
one slightly too far. That's about as good as we're going to get. I've got a clock here, it's yeah, with a higher resolution. Each big division is one thousandths, and you can see that's moving probably, probably two tenths of a thou. You wouldn't get a great lot better than that. That's the high jaw there. That's pretty good. As you see around here, that's the dog's bollocks. With the jaws moving independent, you can have the jaws in different ways around. I've got that two, those two one way, and those two the other way, depending on what you're trying to grip. I've got a bit of square stock here, and I want to centre that hole, so I can bore the hole bigger. There's a very quick method of getting this in the chuck, really accurately. You line it up by eye, that looks about the middle there, so we'll turn like that. So we know we're somewhere near. Okay, all we're going to do is bring in well, the tail stock centre into that hole. little bit of weight on it and we'll gently nip up each jaw till it's just touching one two you see I've got the other two the opposite way on you often need to put packing pieces in here bits of aluminium if you don't want to damage the the face you're gripping Right, so we've got basically it held in the centre. Right, next thing is to put a centre into the hole I've already got and put another tail stock centre into the hole on the back of that one. So now we'll turn that and we can see I'll run out on there. You've actually got a, I've actually got a spring loaded bar that I use for this, but if you haven't got one you can, you can do it this way. So we'll put our clock here John again. I'll use this one because I think the camera picks it up easier. Obviously the closer you get to the, the job, the more accurate it's going to be. But for the sake of the video, we'll do it on there. Right, the same method as before. Find my lower point, which is there. Which you the clock on the lower point. Find the high point, which is there, 11 thou. Half that, five and a half. Zero the clock again. Turn it forward to the next jaw, which is that one. Tighten that back to zero. That's within two thou. Find a high point, which is that one, which is that jaw there. High point again is that one. That's very near. 
I point that one. That's just about spot on. I mean, that didn't take long at all. And I'm playing with the video camera at the same time, so. I hope this video has helped you a little bit. It takes some of the mystery out of a four jaw chuck. There's nothing magical about it. Basic, simple enough engineering. The secret is to practice. The more you practice, the easier it becomes. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And get the chuck out of the cupboard and play with it. So we'll use the same procedure as I used before. We'll find the lowest point, which is there. Turn my clock here to zero. Find my highest point. That is the highest point, you clown. 